Hi everybody, welcome to Clay Talk. I'm just going to hang on for a few minutes uh, while everybody joins. Hi Linda, welcome. We'll just get started in a couple minutes as uh, soon as everybody joins. Well, I'm going to wait like two minutes and then I'm going to get started. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Suzette Hussey. Um, I've been working with Creative Paper Clay for about 10 years now and I've been designing for them since 2017. Um, so I'm very you know, versed with using their clay and I do a lot of sculptures. Um, I recently started an art school, papermachepatch.com and I have a couple courses up now using creative paper clay. So uh, today we're going to be talking about um, cookie cutter ornaments and um, someone was asking for them last month and I decided okay I'm going to do the cookie cutter ornaments but try make them more interesting than I would, you know, like just regular ornaments that you do like with kids and stuff. So we're gonna be adding some texture and stuff and make them more fun. Um, before I get started, I would love if you all could share the link to the, to the, live, to the live feed today. Um, it's the best way that we get our, our name out there and our product out there so more, more and more people can know about it. So I'm going to spin around my camera um, so you can see my very messy table here and I'm just going to go over all what we're going to do. I'm going to talk about texture that we can use in the clay and then I'm going to demonstrate a couple ornaments so you can see how I made them. So I'm just going to spin this around so we can get a better idea. There we go. Of what we're gonna do. All right, I think that's good. Okay, um, these are the little guys we're gonna. I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, they've been decorated uh, in a variety of ways, and I have also added texture in a variety of ways. So I'm gonna share that with you. I used both the Delight Clay for um, two of them. This one was, these these two rather were both with the Delight Clay and the other ones I used with the Creative Paper Clay. So both can be used to make the ornaments and both of them hold texture quite well. Um, Terry unfortunately cannot join me today. She normally helps me with the chat but she has no Wi-Fi. She's in California and those wildfire, wildfires are affecting her. So I will try um, get to the chat in between um, giving the demonstration. So before I get into making the ornaments, I just want to share with you a couple things that you can use to add texture to your clay. I have a bag of goodies here and um, these are just stuff I have laying around the house and I use them to add texture. Uh, this is just regular lace, a piece of lace, and you can put it over your clay and put something like a piece of, um, this is just a backing off of a rubber stamp mount, and just roll it gently in your clay, and the texture will come out. Um, that's what I did in this little one here. So you see how the texture came out nicely. Another one is burlap. Here in Jamaica, um, our coffee comes in these nice burlap bags, so I always keep them. And I use them in in my art room. And this, the texture in this little guy here, in this little star, was made from the burlap. Once again, just rolling the rolling pin and pressing it down in the clay. And this is the lovely texture that you get from it. Other ideas. Um, this is a piece of mesh. I have no idea what it's from. I just had it in my stash. This can also be used to 
add texture and corrugated cardboard is a great one we'll be using that one tonight and also um, just yarn and string and stuff like that it really adds a nice texture I use that in I think it's this one here and it gave a great texture so I'm going to show how I use these and um, that's that's the stuff you have laying around the house. Um, stuff that you can buy are these. These, I think, are more for jelly printing, but they're fine with clay as well. These um, are, are texture plates. These ones are by Carabao Studio. Um, background rubber stamps. When you have these big background rubber stamps, they're great uh, to imprint in it. Or I'm going to show you something else we can do with that one. And then these I've had for a long time, um, like over 10 years, but I'm sure they're still available. These are used for polymer clay and they're called texture sheets. So as you can see, some of them are back and front. I use them for jelly printing as well. That's why the, um, the paint is on them. So these are a great idea. Also, they're texture sheets. And also, um, more texture sheets can be found like if you look in the section that has um, cake decoration stuff that you'd use like in fondant to get um, texture in the clay. Most of those things actually that you use for cake decorating can, well the fondant in particular or gum paste can also be used with um, creative paper clay. So that's pretty much an overview of things that we can use for the clay. So let me just run through the chat, see if there are any questions. No, everybody's just saying hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so happy you could join me. And I'm just going to get started on how on these little guys here that I already made. So the tools that I'm going to use, I use a nice, um, this is just a regular tile. I use, it's great for rolling out clay on when I'm making something like the cookie cutter ornaments. And this is a great trick I just wanted to share with you. If you want to get like an even width across the entire ornament when you're rolling it out, like this is about quarter inch, you can just stick fudge sticks together. I don't recommend a glue gun because they'll be uneven if you do that, but just regular wood glue and you stick them together and then you'll see how I use them on either side to roll out and then the clay will be even throughout the um, ornament. So let me get started on my first one. I am going to begin with a star and show you how I did that one. This is the first one on my list to show you. Let me just grab my clay. When you're not using your clay, it's a good idea to keep it in a plastic box like this with a seal. And this one has a, a little seal around it because it is an air dry clay and it will dry out. So I'm just kind of, um, you know, kneading it a bit because it's been in there, but it's still very soft as you can see. Once you keep it locked up properly, a press and seal is another good way of keeping it um, nice and moist as well as a Ziploc bag with a moist paper towel. If it does dry out a bit, however, it's not a big deal. You should just dip your fingers in some water like that and just knead it and it will be nice and soft and ready to use again. So this is how I'm going to place it between hair so you'll see how these work. And then I'm going to grab my rolling pin here and I'm just going to gently roll that out. So as you can see, this prevents the rolling pin from going any further down. So the clay is going to be even on both sides. So that's just a great way of making sure it's even. And then I'm going to grab my star or you could also, if you wanted to do it a little bit um, 
less organized which I do like to do sometimes I'm just gonna go ahead and these are clear rubber stamps on a stamping block they're snowflakes and I'm just gonna go ahead and push that down in the clay in varying places depending of course how you want them And then I can go back in and decide what I want to keep in my image that way. So I move it around until I find a spot that I like. And then I just push down like that. I remove the clay from around it. And there you have it. Now um, I would probably just leave this on the tile and just move it aside. Um, if I didn't want it to, you know, get um, messed up any. But one thing I just wanted to point out to you right here is it's a good idea at this point just to take a damp finger and smooth the edges where the the cutter um, cut the clay. Um, that way you don't have to do any sanding later. If you don't want to move it because you're afraid it will break, then that's fine. You just Use a little um, a fine grit sandpaper when it's dry and just clean up those edges a bit before you continue. So that was with a clear rubber stamp, a clear stamp, and we got that beautiful impression, as you can see. So I'm going to move right along and show you how I got the texture with the string. Pretty much anything that has a texture can be used to you know make the clay more interesting there are just so many things if you look around the house you'll actually be surprised how many things you start to find so the next one is the little christmas tree so that's nice and um even now so what I'm going to do is just grab my string here and I'm just going to place it all over. No real, you know, reason why I'm doing it like this. I'm just having it randomly on there. And then I'm going to grab my piece of paper here and I'm just going to press down gently in the clay. Now having the two sets of fudge sticks on either side will prevent the clay from getting too thin. So I'm not too worried about pressing in it. Once you've done that, you can just pull it back out and as you can see we're left with lots of lovely texture. And then again just like with the first one we decide where we're gonna place it and we go ahead and make that ornament. Some cookie cutters aren't as sharp as others so you have to ensure you get that clean cut. And once again, you can just take your finger and smooth those edges. And there you go. Lovely texture once again. Our next ornament, I'm just going to go through all of them quickly first and then I have a set that's made so I can show you how I decorated them. All right, the next one now is very interesting. We're going to do another star. But what makes this one special is that we're going to stamp directly in it. Now this one I would um, probably not move after I've done it until it's dry. But because I'm doing it for this, I'm going to move it out the way so I can have the space. So for this one now, I'm going to use my rubber stamp that I have here, my background stamp, and I'm going to use my star shape. So what I am going to do 
is get my pigment ink. This is just black pigment ink. And I'm going to stamp up, um, ink up my stamp rather. And I'm going to turn that over and place it face down. So I'm stamping directly into the wet clay with the pigment ink. It may smudge a bit because it is going to move a bit when you rub. But that's okay for the look I'm going for anyway. If you didn't want it to smudge, um, you could try stamping when it was dry. And then I'm going to take that off and see the ink is down in the clay now. And once again, I'm just going to find a nice spot that I like. If you want the ink darker, you can um, stamp it, um, ink it more than I did. And once again, I'm going to smooth those edges. But if it was inked very dark, um, I probably would just leave it and sand it when it's dry because it would smudge. So I'm going to put that one aside to dry as well. So that's another way, an interesting way of getting great texture with a rubber stamp. You can reuse the clay even though it has the pigment ink in it because, um, I mean, I'm just going to use it for ornament and paint. So it doesn't matter if it's slightly discolored or not. So the next one I'm going to do is the candy cane. This one now, I wanted to add some unique texture. I might need a bit more clay. Let me just grab some more clay. This one, as you can see, has a very, it has all the ridges of the candy cane. So I wanted to come up with a way where I could get those ridges without sitting down and carving out every single one. So what I did was I rolled out the clay as usual. Actually, this one I actually use. Let me use the delight clay for this one. I just remembered I used the delight clay for that one. Let me go ahead and use the delight clay for that one for you. So you can see how this one works as well. As you can see, it's a nice, spongy, light clay. It kind of feels like a marshmallow. It's very, very soft and easy to work with. Great for um, arthritic hands or for young children. So I'm just gonna roll that out just like that. And then I am going to grab my corrugated cardboard. This is, um comes in a lot of packaging and I'm going to put that down and once again I'm just going to roll I probably should have done it the other way but that's okay I'll roll it sideways to get those lines in the clay great texture it may stick a bit that's okay if you find that things are sticking by the way like your rubber stamp a great um way to do with that is just have like a paintbrush a nice fluffy paintbrush like a fan brush or something and um a tub of cornstarch or baby powder and that's a great way to to prevent them from sticking if you just brush it on your rubber stamp first and then um use it in your clay the clay will not stick so we have this like this now so what i'm going to do is i don't want it like that because i don't want my lines going down i want them at an angle so i kind of move around my cookie cutter hair until i find the angle that i want because i want them diagonally and then i go ahead and i cut it out that's perfect you can see all the ridges of the candy cane as you can see, the delight clay cuts very easily and it's also very light. So being I have this delight clay here, I'm going to do the other one that was delight clay also. For that one, which is this one here, I use a texture plate. 
Here are my texture plates. And it's straightforward. It's just like working with the rubber stamp. You roll out your clay first. I'm doing it both ways to make sure that it's wide enough for the stamp. And I'm trying to keep those in place also. And then I'm going to put down my texture sheet and roll again. And that texture comes out really, really nicely there. And then once again, you just press down. And there you have it. Do you see how nice um, the, 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 delight, the, sorry, the Delight Clay actually takes texture quite well. Um, it holds every little detail. I find that it's really good in um, silicone molds in particular. And it's light, so it can stick on anything. So let me just put that one out of the way. Let me put up the Delight Clay. Because my other ornament that I have left, the other two are with the creative paper clay. And that would be this one and this one. So I'm gonna quickly go through those and then we'll move on to decorating. This is the press and seal. I think it's by Glad. Great for putting up your clay. All right, so we'll move back to the creative paper clay now. it was out so it's getting a bit dry so I'm just adding a little bit of water if you can when you're working um just keep it you know in a ziploc bag especially if you live in a dry climate or if you have like an air condition blowing so these ones are straightforward the gingerbread man most of that work was done after he was um, dry. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them out anyway and just show you what I did with the gingerbread man. Like I said, this has the one, it's a bit dirty because it has the pigment in, in ink in it, but I'm not bothered because I'm going to be painting over it. So I found that the plastic cookie cutter didn't give me a clean as clean a cut as the metal ones so I tried to get as much off but then what I do is you get a craft knife of some sort something sharp and then just go around it if that happens As I said before, the more cleaning up that you do now is the better, the easier it will be for you later on when you're, um, when it's dry and you're sanding, if it needs sanding. So as you can see, those areas were left. So I'm just going to use a little knife here. And that's only because it's the plastic cookie cutter. So definitely the metal ones are the better ones for working with this clay. It could be an old cookie cutter as well because I had them when my kids were small. So as before, you can peel it off and um, this is why I leave them sometimes. You saw how that head moved a while ago. Sometimes I just leave it on the actual tile to dry. Now the creative paper clay, you can put in a low oven, about 250 Fahrenheit, and um, bake for like 20 minutes. The Delight clay, however, um, doesn't react well with the oven. It tends to puff up and um, it loses its shape. 
So I don't re recommend putting the delight clay in an oven, but the creative paper clay, definitely you can put it in a low oven if you're in a hurry. And also, um, if you find that they curl, I just put mine under a heavy book overnight once they were um, dry, and that took care of that. Um, someone else had recommended, but I haven't tried it yet, is to dry them on a cookie sheet, uh, a cookie cooler, a uh, cooling rack rather. So it has air circulating everywhere evenly. So I'm just going to quickly cut out the reindeer and we can move on to decorating. Reindeer is straightforward. And then we can put away our clay. I also like to use the tile because it just pops right into my oven if I decide to bake them because I have a small toaster oven in my art room that I use specifically for clay. So I'm going to put this away now. I'm just going to leave these all on here so they can dry. And move them out the way. So let's move on to the decorating. Let me just put up this clay. And let's get on to the decorating. All right, so you've seen how we got all that fabulous texture. So the next step is decorating them all. So this is a set I've done already. And these are all dry. And there's a gingerbread man. I've gone ahead and painted him because that's straightforward because I didn't want to take up too much time. All right, so the first one I did was this star. I'm going to move all of these guys out the way because for this star I'm going to use spray inks. These are from Art Anthology coloration sprays and um, let me just point out because I'm using the coloration sprays I am not adding a coat of gesso to this because I want it to be absorbed into the clay. I don't want it to sit on top of the clay like a paint. So when I, anytime I spray, I usually put paper towel down. So it's straightforward. I just give it a good spray and the clay will absorb it. Those areas will stand out more. And uh, when that's dry, you can do the other side and um, and the sides also. To do the sides it's very simple. You can just grab a brush and just kind of grab some of that ink and go around them. And you can also do the other side if you like. If you're hanging it on a tree I guess it's best if you do the other side just in case it flips around. So you can do that with any colors as dark as you like. And I'm going to put that one aside to dry. So that's one simple thing. So these are Art Anthology coloration sprays and they're available on their website artanthology.net. So those are great. Another simple one was the Christmas tree. We'll do that one next. All right, so for the Christmas tree, I use what is called an acrylic glazing liquid. If you don't have this, you can just dilute your acrylics with some water. And what I did was I added just a little, because it's a tiny tree, you don't need a lot, and a little dab of paint, 
This is Apple Barrel Acrylic Kelly Green. Their paints work very well with um, creative paper clay. And what I did was I mixed the two together and it creates a glaze. And then you just paint it on. It's very straightforward. So it dilutes the acrylic without taking away any of the pigment from it. So the green is rather rich. Um, if you diluted the acrylic with water, it would be paler, but then you could just do several coats. Whereas for this, I don't need another coat because I'm happy with how that looks here. And then you can just leave that one to dry also. And when it's dry, you can go ahead and do the back. So that was one way of um, decorating them and it's a great finish. If you can see that, it's nice. It has a nice sheen to it. All the texture remains darker and it's just a nice subtle effect. The next one I can show you is this little guy here okay well this is our stocking for this one now i don't have a palette nearby so i'm just going to use her uh we're going to use just a little bit of red acrylic paint this is flag red also by apple barrel and what i'm going to do for this one it's a bit different i'm going to add some water to the paint And then I'm gonna just paint it on. I want a very wet brush. And before that dries, I'm gonna go back in with a paper towel And I'm just going to wipe it back off. As you can see, the paint stays in the grooves where the texture is. And then it's darker in there and then it's lighter on the outside. So that's another great way, just acrylic paint and a little water. Let me just wipe that off so we don't get it on anything else. And we can move on to our next one, which is our candy cane. This one was straightforward also. I've gone ahead and given it a coat of gesso because um, it's white, so I'm not going to add any white paint. It really doesn't need it. So I've given it a coat of gesso already and I'm not adding the white paint. And then I'm just going to get a paintbrush and go ahead and paint in my lines. And it's that simple. Because the indentations are already there. I don't have to worry about where to put my stripe. If you like, you can also go around the edges and just bring that stripe over. That's up to you. You have to have a steady hand to do that though. I'm rushing right now, so it's not that easy, um, not that neat. So that's what I did for that. And then I put that aside to dry. And then before we get to our gingerbread man, we'll do that one last because he has quite a bit going on with him. This is our reindeer. Now for our reindeer, I did something a bit different. I have this paste wax. It's called um, German Silver is the color and it's by Art Anthology. And this is just a makeup sponge. 
And this doesn't have gesso or anything of it on it. I just sanded the edges a bit to smooth it. And you can just go ahead and rub that on. And it comes, it, a little goes a long way. And as you can see, the color is amazing. It's rich, it's shiny. And it literally just takes a couple of minutes to get it on there. Um, a stencil brush would also be good. You get down in those little areas a lot easier if you have a stencil brush laying around. But I kind of try to use what I have on hand. And I'd encourage you to do the same so you don't go bankrupt buying art supplies. So that's pretty much it for this one. Um, you can do the back as well. When it's dry, you can give it a light buff with a soft cloth and it will be nice and shiny. So this is Paste Wax. It's German silver and it's by Art Anthology. Website is www.artanthology.net. I will put the website um, on in a bit for you. So you can um, have a look at the products if you like them. All right, now on to our gingerbread man and our star. That's what we have left. Okay, let me just do the star quickly. For our star, we already had the ink stamped on and it dried on it. As you can see, it's, you know, it doesn't come off. It's fully dry. And what we, what I did to get that nice antique effect, as you can see here, it has a nice antique effect on that one, is I gave it a coat of this. It's Mod Podge and it's antique matte. So it's like Mod Podge and it has a little antique type um, color in there. So if you like antique looking stuff, I definitely would recommend that that you get this one and it's very simple you just go ahead and give it a coat um, use a soft brush if you can because you don't want the streaks and leave it to dry when it's dry it will have that nice antique look so that's a very simple one a very quick one And then everybody I know wants to see this little guy get um, dressed. So let me show you what I did with him. So as you can see here, I added several elements to this little guy. Um, I did glitter on his boots. I gave him a little scarf, painted in the eyes, gave him some cheeks and some eyebrows and a few decorations. All of those things were really simple. A tiny piece of felt. I use a Posca Marco. You can use a paintbrush if you have a steady hand. Uh, regular wax colored pencil. This is a white pen, a paint pen. And of course the glitter. And I used some glue. I think I use this glue actually with the glitter. Just any glue for glitter, it's fine. That's just an embellishment glue. So what I did first was color in the eyes. You can also fill them if you like, if you have um, like a puff paint kind of thing. That would be nice for the eyes too. And um, or if you want to stick a bead in there, that can also work. And I just use the paint markers just to quickly give him a little face. You can use paint, as I said, but you have to have a very steady hand. For the paint the marker i find is easier for me especially if i'm in a hurry and it's as simple as that you just use those paint markers and just go in and decorate you see how quick he's coming to life already and then um you can wait on that to dry a bit or use a heat gun
Normally I'd put on the scarf last, but because um, I don't want to touch the glitter when it's wet, I'm going to do it now. Just so I can show you guys. Um, I have my glue gun hair warming up. So I'm just going to give that a minute. For these other, while the glue gun is warming up, I'm just going to show you what I did to finish off this and this. This I used, um, you see it has a nice sparkly effect. I used Mod Podge um, Sparkle for this one. It is Mod Podge with a little glitter in it, not too much, so it's not overbearing. So it gives you a nice sparkly effect. It's great for ornaments and like whimsical sculptures and stuff. And that's how I finished that one. And this one I added a little white glitter when it was dry. I just put some Mod Podge on it once again, regular gloss Mod Podge, and sprinkled a white glitter on it. Just a, a fine white glitter. And that's how I just added a little just added a little sparkle to this when it was dry. I did the same thing with the candy cane, as you can see once it was dry. Mod Podge gloss and then the glitter. Just a sprinkle, not too much because you don't want it overbearing. All right, let me get his little scarf on now. So I here I have a tiny piece of felt and I'm just going to wrap it around his neck. Try to do it evenly. And then you can go ahead and tie it. I'm going to put the top one under like that. And I'm just going to use this to secure it right there. And then over again, I'm going to use this to secure it once more. And then grab a pair of scissors and then just trim right here and then what you can do is just add some little clips right here just to give it that free look at the end and that's his little scarf as easy as that next I'm going to add the glitter So I just added some glue on each end for the hands and then I gave him some boots down here. And a piece of paper, got my glitter. And just go ahead and sprinkle. While that's drying, the last thing I did, let me just get that off the face, is I used my red, um, this is called magenta, it's a Prismacolor, and I just gently added some cheeks. That was pretty much it for him. Leave him to dry. Move my glitter aside for a minute. And to finish up, the last thing you have to do for each of the ornaments, I'll show you on one of these. This one dry. Okay, this one is dry. I haven't done the back, but that's okay. I'll show you how I added um, the string. So just grab any string that you might have, any ribbon, yarn, raffia is also cute, and determine what length you want it, and that's a bit long for me, so I'm just going to snip off the end, add a little bit of hot glue, just a little, I'm going to let it cool just for a minute so I don't burn myself.
and then make sure you have both of the pieces together because you want both of them to stick in the hot glue and press that down okay that's good and then you have your hanger for your ornament and that uh, that's pretty much it how I got all of those um, cookie cutter ornaments I'm just gonna type for you the website artanthology.net that's where um, you can get that paste wax if you want it and also the um, the sprays um, I mentioned at the beginning that I recently launched my own school um, paper mache patch dot com and I'm gonna I have a couple new courses I just want to show you what they are it's two Christmas courses I'm just typing the website name for you why I'm losing track of what I'm saying so um, I have two Christmas courses recently launched if you'd like to take a look at them this one is do you want to build a snowman and then I also have another one called Santa Moon and uh, to say thank you for all of you guys for following me and um, supporting me on play talk um, I have added in the chat a 40% off a coupon it's Mary 2020 that you can use at um, paper mache patch.com if you like and it's valid until December 31st so that's a thank you from me to you guys and um, are there any questions If not, I will wrap up and say thank you very much for watching me today and um, have a safe holiday season and a happy new year when it comes. Next clay talk will be the first Thursday in February, in um, January rather, sorry, which is January 7th, I do believe. Yes, January 7th is our next clay talk. It will be the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed making the cookie cutter ornament. I hope you learned something new today. And um, happy holidays and I'll see you in the new year.